after the match. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Today we gather to celebrate Palm Sunday of the Lord's Passion. Please take a moment to silence any electronic devices you may have. Our readings begin with number 919. That's number 919. Please stand and greet those around you. Dear Our brothers and sisters, as we begin this liturgy of the Palm Sunday, I'd like to ask all of you to please turn towards the baptismal font. Our entrance hymn is number 421, All Glory, Laud, and Honor, number 421. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, since the beginning of Lent until now, we have prepared our hearts by penance and charitable works. Today, we gather together to herald with the whole church the beginning of the celebration of our Lord's Paschal Mystery, that is to commemorate the Lord's entry into the city for our salvation, following His footsteps so that being made by His grace partakers of the cross, we may have also a share in His resurrection and in His life. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, sanctify these branches with Your blessing, that we who follow Christ, the King in exaltation, may reach the eternal Jerusalem through Him, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you. When Jesus and his disciples drew near to Jerusalem, to Bethphage and Bethany on the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples and said to them, go into the village opposite you, and immediately on entering it, you will find a colt tethered on which no one has ever sat. Untie it and bring it here. 
And if anyone should say to you, why are you doing this? Reply, the master has need of it and will send it back here at once. And so they went off and found the colt tethered at the gate outside on the street and they untied it. Some of the bystanders said to them, what are you doing untying the colt? They answered them, just as Jesus had told them to, and they permitted them to do it. And so they brought the colt to Jesus and put their cloaks over it, and they sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut from the fields. Those preceding him, as well as those following, kept crying out, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the kingdom of our father David that is to come. Hosanna in the highest. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Dear brothers and sisters, like the crowds who acclaim Jesus in Jerusalem, let us go forth in peace. Number 421. Almighty ever-living God, who as an example of humility for the human race to follow, cause our Savior to take flesh and submit to the cross, graciously grant that we may heed his lesson of patient suffering and so merit a share in his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God has given me a well-trained tongue that I might know how to speak to the weary a word that will rouse them. Morning after morning, he opens my ear that I may hear, and I have not rebelled, have not turned back. I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who plucked my beard. My face I did not shield from buffets and spitting. The Lord God is my help. Therefore, I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. The word of the Lord. Our psalm responses on page 22, 
My God, My God, number 22. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness. And found human in appearance, he humbled himself. Being, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
Christ became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name. Praise to you. Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. The Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread were to take place in two days' time. So the chief priests and the scribes were seeking a way to arrest him by treachery and put him to death. They said, Not during the festival, for fear that there may be a riot among the people. When he was in Bethany, Reclining at table in the house of Simon the leper, a woman came with an alabaster jar of perfumed oil, genuine, costly spikenard. She broke the alabaster jar and poured it on his head. There were some who were indignant. Why has there been this waste of perfumed oil? It could have been sold for more than 300 days' wages and the money given to the poor. They were infuriated with her. Jesus said, Let her alone. Why do you make trouble for her? She has done a good thing for me. The poor you will always have with you. And whenever you wish, you can do good to them, but you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anticipated anointing my body for burial. Amen, I say to you, Whatever the gospel is proclaimed to the whole world, what she has done will be told in memory of her. Then Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve, went off to the chief priests to hand him over to them. When they heard him, they were pleased and promised to pay him money. Then he looked for an opportunity to hand him over. On the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, when they sacrificed the Passover lamb, his disciples said to him, Where do you want us to go and prepare for you to eat the Passover? He sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go to the city and a man will meet you there carrying a jar of water. Follow him. Whatever he enters, say to the master of the house, the teacher says, where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? Then he will show you a large upper room, furnished and ready. Make the preparations for us there. The disciples then went off, entered the city, and found it just as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover. When it was evening, he came with the twelve. And as they reclined at table and were eating, Jesus said, Amen, I say to you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They began to be distressed and said to him one by one, Surely it is not I. He said to them, One of the twelve, the one who dips with me into the dish. But the Son of Man indeed goes as it is written of him, but woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would be better for that man if he had never been born. While they were eating, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them, and said, Take it, this is my body. Then he took a cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, and they all drank from it. He said to them, this is my blood of the covenant, which will be shed for many. Amen, I say to you, I shall not drink again the fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. Then, after singing a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, All of you will have your faith shaken, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep will be dispersed. 
But after I have been raised up, I shall go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Even though all should have their faith shaken, mine will not be. Then Jesus said to him, Amen, I say to you, this very night, before cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. But he vehemently replied, Even though I should have to die with you, I will not deny you. And they all spoke similarly. Then they came to a place named Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took with him Peter, James, and John, and began to be troubled and distressed. Then he said to them, My soul is sorrowful even to death. Remain here and keep watch. He advanced a little and fell to the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass by him. He said, Abba, Father, all things are possible to you. Take this cup away from me, but not what I want, but what you will. When he returned, he found them asleep. He said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep watch for one hour? Watch and pray that you may not undergo the test. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Withdrawing again, he prayed, saying the same thing. Then he returned once more and found them asleep, for they could not keep their eyes open and did not know what to answer him. He returned a third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? It's enough. The hour has come. Behold, the Son of Man is to be handed over to sinners. Get up, let us go. See, my betrayer is at hand. Then, while he was speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived accompanied by a crowd with swords and clubs who had come from the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders. His betrayer had arranged a signal with them, saying, The man I shall kiss is the one. Arrest him and lead him away securely. He came and immediately went over to him and said, Rabbi. And he kissed him. At this, they laid hands on him and arrested him. One of the bystanders drew his sword, struck the high priest's servant, and cut off his ear. Jesus said to them in reply, Have you come out as a, against a robber? with swords and clubs to seize me. Day after day I was with you teaching in the temple area, yet you did not arrest me, but that the scriptures might be fulfilled. And they all left him and fled. Now a young man followed him wearing nothing but a linen cloth about his body. They seized him, but he left the cloth behind and ran off naked. They led Jesus away to the high priest, and all the chief priests and the elders and the scribes came together. Peter followed him at a distance into the high priest's courtyard and was seated with the guards, warming himself at the fire. The chief priests and the entire Sanhedrin kept trying to obtain testimony against Jesus in order to put him to death, but they found none. Many gave false witness against him but their testimony did not agree. Some took the stand and testified falsely against him, alleging, Even so, their testimony did not agree. The high priest rose before the assembly and questioned Jesus, saying, Have you no answer? What are these men testifying against you? But he was silent and answered nothing. Again the high priest asked him and said to him, Are you the Christ, the Son of the Blessed One? Then Jesus answered, I am, and you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming with the clouds of heaven. At that the high priest tore his garments and said, what further need have we of witnesses? You have heard the blasphemy. What do you think? They all condemned him 
as deserving to die. Some began to spit on him. They blindfolded him and struck him and said to him, and the guards greeted him with blows. While Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the high priest's maids came along. Seeing Peter warming himself, she looked intently at him and said, But he denied it, saying, I neither know nor understand what you are talking about. So he went out into the outer court. Then a cock crowed. The maid saw him and began to say to the bystanders, this. Once again, he denied it. A little later, the bystanders said to Peter once more, he began to curse and swear. I do not know this man about whom you are talking. And immediately, a cock crowed a second time. Then Peter remembered the words that Jesus had said to him. Before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. He broke down and wept. As soon as morning came, the chief priests with the elders and the scribes, that is the whole Sanhedrin, held a council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate questioned him. Are you the king of the Jews? He said to him in reply. You say so. The chief priests accused him of many things. Again, Pilate questioned him. Have you no answer? See how many things they accuse you of. Jesus gave him no further answer, so that Pilate was amazed. Now, on the occasion of the feast, he used to release to them one prisoner whom they requested. A man called Barabbas was then in prison, along with the rebels who had committed murder in a rebellion. The crowd came forward and began to ask him to do for them as he was accustomed. Pilate answered, Do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? For he knew that it was out of envy that the chief priests had handed him over. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate again said to them in reply, Then what do you want me to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? They shouted again, Crucify him. Pilate said to them, Why? What evil has he done? They only shouted the louder. Crucify him. So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas to them, and after he had Jesus scourged, handed him over to be crucified. The soldiers led him away inside the palace, that is, the praetorium, and assembled the whole cohort. They clothed him in purple, and weaving a crown of thorns, placed it on him. They began to salute him with, Hail, O King of the Jews, and kept striking his head with a reed and spitting upon him. They knelt before him in homage, and when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the purple cloak, dressed him in his own clothes, and led him out to crucify him. They pressed in to service a passerby, Simon, a Cyrenian, who was coming in from the country, the father of Alexander and Rufus, to carry his cross. They brought him to the place of Golgotha, which is translated place of the skull. They gave him wine drugged with myrrh, but he did not take it. Then they crucified him and divided his garments by casting lots for them to see what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, the King of the Jews. With him, they crucified two revolutionaries, one on his right and one on his left. Those passing by reviled him, shaking their heads and saying, Aha, you who would destroy the temple and rebuild in three days, save yourself. Likewise, the chief priests with the scribes mocked him among themselves and said, We saved others, we cannot save ourselves. Let the Christ, the King of Israel, come down now and cross, that we may see and believe. 
those who were crucified with him also kept abusing him. At noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And at three o'clock, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lema sabachthani, which is translated, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of the bystanders who heard it said, One of them ran, soaked a sponge with wine, put it on a reed, and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see if Elijah comes to take him down. Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. Be still. Please rise. The veil of the sanctuary was torn in two from top to bottom. When the centurion who stood facing him saw how he breathed his last, he said, Truly this man was the Son of God. There were also women looking on from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene, Mary, the mother of the younger James and of Joseph, and Salome. These women had followed him when he was in Galilee and ministered to him. There were also many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem. When it was already evening, since it was the day of preparation, the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a distinguished member of the council, who was himself awaiting the kingdom of God, came and courageously went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Pilate was amazed that he was already dead. He summoned the centurion and asked him if Jesus had already died. And when he learned of it from the centurion, he gave the body to Joseph. Having bought a linen cloth, he took him down, wrapped him in the linen cloth, and laid him in a tomb tomb that had been hewn out of the rock. Then he rolled a stone against the entrance to the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joseph, watched where he was laid. Please be seated. My brothers and sisters, today we as Christians are encouraged to walk the final path of Jesus toward his crucifixion, which will ultimately lead to his resurrection. And the processional gospel that I had read at the beginning of Mass tries to put all of us at the time and the place where everything was about to happen the next few days. Did you ever find yourself looking back and wondering how something like this could happen? Did you ever wonder how you would have reacted had you been there? Here was a man devoted himself to the truth and he was put to death by the very people who considered themselves to be defenders of the truth. Think about that. He was put to death by the very people who defended the truth. Two great philosophies came face to face that day. On one side we had hatred and on the other side we had love. They beat him with a whip. 
They nailed him to a cross, and then they made fun of him. They made fun of him while he was dying. If they only knew. However, when it was over, hatred laid on the ground, and love hung triumphantly on the cross. And that is why the cross represents victory. You want to talk about injustice? Look at Calvary. You want to talk about human suffering? Look at Calvary. You want to talk about religious hypocrisy? and political corruption at the very worst? You don't have to look at Calvary. Just watch the news, read the paper. It's all around us. Use your own imagination. The reason we're sitting here today is because as Christians, we know how it ends. However, if you didn't know how it ended, would you have put the cross or would you have put the crown of thorns on his head? Would you have put the nails in his hands? Would you have carried the cross for Jesus? He carried it for all of us here today. And it was a heavy cross. It was a very heavy cross. Just a few months ago, we celebrated the birthday of this fellow. And we were all here praising God for the gift that he gave us in his son, Jesus Christ. And now we're preparing for his death. 33, maybe 34 years later, we are here preparing for his death, which ultimately leads to his resurrection. At the beginning of my homily, I suggested that you walk the path of Christ this next week. Again, year after year, I say time and time again, if you have never, ever been to the Tritium, Holy Thursday, Good Friday, and Holy Saturday, you have no idea what you're missing. You have no idea what you're missing. Because ultimately, this is who we are. Holy Thursday, Good Friday, and Holy Saturday. Three of the biggest days in the church that we get to celebrate, which ultimately leads to his resurrection. I just want to say one thing. This path that you walk, week after week, it leads to your resurrection also. It leads to the gift that God has given us. Just uh, two weeks ago, we buried 10 people who had no one, who had no one. This week, we're going to bury Jesus for the love of the world that he had for us. But we're also going to celebrate his resurrection. I can only hope and pray to God that each one of you will be there at least one of those things. May God bless you. Let us all stand and profess our faith. The words of our creed can be found at the front cover of the Red Hymnal. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light. True God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, 
for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. Gathered at the foot of the cross, we offer our petitions to the one who never abandoned us, no matter how difficult our hardships are. For the Church, that our celebration of the Paschal Triduum may renew and expand the faith of all those whom Jesus came to save. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For government leaders, that they recognize the people and places suffering and in need of new life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, we hold in your healing presence the suffering people of our world, and the places where people are experiencing division, injustice, and violence, Haiti, the Holy Land, and Ukraine. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who will be baptized and received into full communion with the Church at the Easter Vigil, especially Amira, Samantha, Susan, Kathy, and Mackenzie, that they may be strengthened by the one whose strength was displayed through his passion and crucifixion. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in our community who seek a deeper closeness to the Lord, that the liturgies of this holiest week of weeks may move their hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the balm of St. Clair may spread far and wide and reach those who need healing. We pray to the Lord. Lord we pray for those who mourn the death of their loved ones, that they may find strength and consolation in the hope we find in the resurrection of Jesus from the dead. We pray to the Lord. Lord for those for whom this Mass is offered, Mike Borowski, Rosemary Owen, and Jack Shanley, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of eternal compassion, even when we feel abandoned and forsaken, we know that you are with us. May we know your presence in our suffering as we offer these prayers to you through the one who suffered for us all and became the source of our salvation, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Our song for the presentation of the gifts is number 438, Were You There? Number 438.
Pray, my friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the, may the Lord, Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands, for the, the praise and the glory of this saint, for our God, the good of all his holy church. Through the passion of your only begotten Son, O Lord, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand, so that through so that though we do not merit it by our own deeds, yet by this sacrifice made once for all, we may feel already the effects of your mercy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For though innocent, he suffered willingly for sinners and accepted unjust condemnation to save the guilty. His death has washed away our sins and his resurrection has purchased our justification. And so with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, 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 And from the world's beginning are ceaselessly at work so that the human race may become holy just as you yourself are holy. Look, we pray upon your people's offerings. Pour out on them the power of your spirit that they may become the body and blood of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, in whom we too are your sons and daughters. Indeed, though we once were lost and could not approach you, you loved us with the greatest love. For your Son, who alone is just, handed himself over to death and did not disdain to be nailed for our sake on the wood of the cross. But before his arms were outstretched between heaven and earth to become the lasting sign of your covenant, he desired to celebrate the Passover with his disciples. As he ate with them, he took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to them, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, knowing that he was about to reconcile all things in himself through his blood to be shed on the cross, he took the chalice, filled with the fruit of the vine, and once more giving you thanks, handed the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
Passover and our surest peace. We celebrate his death and resurrection from the dead, and looking forward to his blessed coming, we offer you, who are our faithful and merciful God, this sacrificial victim who reconciles to you the human race. Look kindly, most compassionate Father, on those you unite to yourself by the sacrifice of your Son, and grant that by the power of the Holy Spirit, as they partake of this one bread and one chalice, they may be gathered into one body in Christ, who heals every division. Be pleased to keep us always in communion of mind and heart, together with Francis, our Pope, Alan, our Bishop, Help us to work together for the coming of your kingdom until the hour when we stand before you, saints among the saints in the halls of heaven, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and blessed apostles, all the saints, and with our deceased brothers and sisters, whom we humbly commend to your mercy. Then, freed at last from the wound of corruption, and made fully into a new creation, we shall sing to you with gladness the thanksgiving of Christ, who lives for all eternity. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Gathering all of our prayers into one, let us pray the prayer of Jesus Christ. Our, our Father, Lord, 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 hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the fate of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Now let us offer each other that sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my room. Our communion hymn is number 840, at that first Eucharist, number 840.
Let us pray. Nourished with these sacred gifts, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that just as through the death of your Son, you have brought us to hope for what we believe, so by his resurrection, you may lead us to where you call. Through Christ our Lord, Amen. Amen. We have a few announcements. Please be seated for a few seconds. Just a couple of things. Extra Easter cards are available on the tables. Please share them with friends, neighbors, and family. Join us in the vineyard for breakfast following the Sunday Masses this weekend. Proceeds go to the Special Olympics. Please join us beginning this Thursday at 7 p.m as we begin our holy triduum and walk with Jesus through his Paschal mystery. Also, consider visiting the altars of repose throughout Detroit this Holy Thursday. See the detailed list of hours, addresses, and short reflections for each church in our bulletin or in flyers at the entrances of the church. And don't forget to take a bulletin home. saw that finger right there. <laughs> on, today, on this Palm Sunday, I want to say thank you to each of you who took the balm of St. Clair into your hands. And you extended this balm to, to the people out there. Whether it was challenging, whether it was easy, whether there was something that you have done before or maybe never done before, I'm very grateful to you. That was our six weeks of prayer for healing. Healing in our relationships, healing in our families, healing in this country, and healing in our communities. Whatever we can, we need to do this intentionally. That was the, just a very simple act. But I hope that through the prayer, charity, and fasting, we were able as well during the season of Lent bring something good and positive where we are, with whom we are, and to what we are responsible for. May this prayer, and uh, just to let you know that all of those who participate in this, you were prayed for. So during the weekday masses, every day, that you will have the strength to carry on with that mission. There are still a few days left of the season of Lent, if you would like to pick up something, please do. And the final thing is, too, if you have not yet written a letter of welcome, support to our candidates and catechumens who are going to be initiated into Catholic Church this coming Saturday, please do so, but bring it to the parish office. There are two baskets by the baptismal font. If you brought it today, put them there, and then we will give them on the day of their retreat. The Lord be with you. The Almighty God bless you all, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace, to love, and to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and the snares of the devil. Like your eye can we help you pray. And thou, Prince of the heavenly hosts, by the power of God, pass into hell Satan. And all the evil spirits prowl around the world, seeking the Lord of souls. Have a blessed holy week. Our recessional hymn is number 435. O oh, sacred head surrounded, number four, three, five.